Oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. What I'm going to talk about will make some of you angry because some of your opinions are always tainted by your political side. Me personally, I hate politics because it's all about lying and whoever lies best gets to control the government and gets to control me. With me, I don't believe any politician because their goal is to accumulate power. They're not here to help you regardless of what you think. If you believe differently than I do, that's fine, but please do not reject what I will discuss today because I'm concerned about a bigger picture and that's the world of deception. I can tell you're being deceived because things that your politicians stood for 20 years ago are no longer the same things they push today, yet you likely spout the same rhetoric as the party you voted for. How can political sides now push for different things? It almost seems like once you pick a side, the side can change and you go along with it. Today, there's a whole infrastructure of tools that aid in this changing of your views. And the big player in this is big tech. This past week, Elon Musk released even more detail about the backroom decisions made at Twitter 1.0 that clearly had the intent of swaying public opinion by de-amplifying certain voices. But as mind-boggling as this intentional attempt by Twitter to influence the masses, Twitter itself has a limited capability to spread information. That it is the likes of Google and Facebook that have much more power. And they have no Elon Musk on the inside to reveal the deception that goes on. But you have me, so I'll explain what I know. Fortunately for us, they're not hiding a lot of this. Think outside of the box of politics for a moment, folks, and decide for yourself if you want to live in a world where all the information you get is from deception. And if you don't accept this as a danger, watch what happens when political ideas change and big tech is not on your side. They will sway you to change to their side. By the way, if you didn't know this, I'm doing a recording on the boat and it's extremely windy right now. And the boat's like shaking like crazy. So I hope you don't get distracted. Stay right there. Journalist Barry Wise just provided the factual information that Twitter was doing shadow banning of individuals on the platform. She reported that Fox News host Dan Bongino was placed on a search blacklist and Twitter had Turning Point USA's Charlie Kirk on Do Not Amplify. Another one subject to shadow banning was Stanford University's Dr. J. Bhattacharya, a long-standing opponent of COVID groupthink during the pandemic, who expressed opposition to lockdowns. The Twitter files release continued on to reveal that the FBI had collaborated with Twitter top executives to counter what they call disinformation. This resulted in the amplifying the details about Hunter Biden right before the election, as well as the banning of a sitting president from the platform. The response of several on Twitter was an amazing demonstration of the lack of intellect. Twitter is a private company. They can do whatever they want. These same people who said this about past activities of Twitter are now saying that Twitter 2.0 with Elon Musk needs to be investigated and perhaps banned on app stores. So the private company argument is only good as long as they are not against your side. There's a bigger picture here that I want to discuss. The details revealed about Twitter is one thing, but clearly this is nothing compared to what happens at Google and Facebook. We have moved to a world where we accept deception. We accept being manipulated. Truth is no longer a requirement. Here's a couple of voices that do not scream extreme partisanship to me. Glenn Greenwald says this, the reason liberals never complain about the CIA, FBI, or big tech monopoly power, once a staple of their politics, it's almost completely disappeared from left liberal discourse, is that now they perceive correctly that all these institutions are on their side. And this is interesting too, in that the left, of course, are all about police defunding, but not about CIA or FBI defunding. You see how precise this aiming of the narrative is. Edward Snowden, who by the way voted for Obama, says, it bothers me how power struggles within the blue-red corporate uniparty transform complex philosophies 
into meaningless epithets. If you argue censorship is good, actually, you're not a liberal. If you cheer for the FBI, you are not a liberal. I've told you a little bit of my background in the past, if you've seen my live streams, and this is what colors my perception of the world. When I was young, I lived in a country run by a dictator. We were under martial law. The dictator controlled every means of communication. The newspapers and TV stations were all government controlled. All opposition publications and media were shut down, and all those opposition voices were rotting in jail. In this environment, there were plenty of people on the take from the dictator, and those people would happily report you to the government if you speak against the government. Many vocal people disappeared, particularly teachers and professors. It was dangerous to speak publicly against the government. It was dangerous to even speak at your home because a neighbor might hear you and you don't know what side they're on. Fake elections were held every few years. The result was always the same. 99% of the votes for the dictator. It doesn't matter what you vote, the results will be the same. Yet many years later, when I was already gone, a revolution occurred and the dictator was deposed. How could there be a revolution if 99% of the people voted for him? This, folks, is the power of control of information. If someone can deceive you with an explanation of reality, then you will accept that reality. Let me focus on what's different today than the times of my childhood or the time of people in the Soviet Union, for example. Now, of course, it's different because information flow is centralized with big tech and your identity is matched to your consumption and release of information. What we found out happened at Twitter is nothing compared to what happens at Google and Facebook every day. Let's start with the analysis of tools at the disposal of big tech just to demonstrate to you that their control of the information flow is complete. Just like the dictator when I was young, actually worse. As I explained in my last video, the difference today is that the typical normie is driven to have a mobile phone and their entire life is driven through this mobile phone. But this mobile phone is tied to a tracking infrastructure that has never existed in the past. The phone has constant location tracking that can never be turned off. In fact, on iPhones, the phone tracking continues even when you turn the phones off. If you don't understand how this constant location tracking cannot be turned off, go watch my last video on phone tracking. Platforms like Google, Facebook, and Apple ensure that you activate two-factor authentication on this phone, seemingly a benign requirement, but what it really does is tie the tracking of the phone to a platform regardless of what device you are currently using. This in cybersecurity circles is called cross-device tracking. Phones have a unique identity and are tied to your online ID, such as your Apple ID and Google ID. The Google ID specifically is tracked across every website you visit and every click on YouTube and every search on Google search. Your Facebook ID is also tied to your internet destinations, just like your Google ID. So this results in two extremely important points. Your phone provides a firm identity to what you do on the internet, much worse than a simple IP address. Facebook, of course, knows your exact identity as well, since they have a crowd-verified name and a confirming list of contacts associated with you. Facebook knows every statement you make, every like, everything you click on. Their ability to spot your activities also goes beyond Facebook. Facebook can track you even when you go to external websites and platforms as long as you have a Facebook account. I'm not going to get into the technical explanation about how this happens. You'll have to watch my other more detailed videos explaining all this. Now, the result of all this is that Google and Facebook know exactly what you are thinking. You are being watched. And as shown at the action to Twitter, Big Tech, of course, will shadow ban you or apply secret procedures called visibility filtering or outright ban you if you talk about things that are outside of what these companies want you to talk about. 
It goes much deeper though. This is the big difference between let's say Twitter versus Google or Facebook. The difference is that Google and Facebook know who you are exactly. They know where you live. They know who you are associated with. They know your political side, your financial status, your medical status, where you've been, who you've met with, where you had dinner. They know your thoughts. Twitter, in contrast, only knows the activities associated with your Twitter account. Twitter doesn't have any information past what you show in your Twitter account. Twitter doesn't have a grouping of your families and friends, nor a history of your locations. Google and Facebook, however, have a very potent database of people with exact locations and sorted by your ideas. I've already explained in the last video that Google actually identifies groups of people by ideas in what are called cohorts. And this cohort grouping was originally intended to group people for advertising purposes. Google, however, can influence you everywhere. Google can read your Gmail. Google can send you email. Google can see your search activities. Google can alter your search results. Google can direct you to specific YouTube videos. Google can target messages based on where you live. Now, some of you accept that Google and Facebook know all, but they are benign organizations with no evil intent. Let's get back to the Twitter story for a moment. There is now factual evidence showing that Twitter 1.0 conspired with the FBI to control information flow on issues that could have impacted an election. There's factual information that shows that what you see amplified and de-amplified on Twitter were actually controlled by a few that aim to impose their political opinion on the population. There's also factual information that these executives on Twitter lied. They say they're not doing such a thing as message manipulation. Facts now show that Gade was shadow banning. This same Gade went on the Joe Rogan show with Jack Dorsey to publicly state that sunlight is the best disinfectant. And therefore, it is not a good thing to censor. Yet right after that, the most active manipulation of online content occurred on Twitter with the intent of silencing voices in opposition to her political belief. Shadow banning is one of the most insidious ways to control speech on the internet because it is based on deception. The poster and the viewers have no idea that there is active shadow banning going on. So the poster is discouraged by the lack of response to his or her post. The viewer does not see the post, so is not aware of an opposing point of view to any topic. In a way, my childhood experience of having a dictator control information is better because it is more blatant. So you may understand that you may have different ideas, but you can keep it to yourself. But shadow banning is sneaky and particularly dangerous when it is used in political targeting. And then there's also an external force on Twitter a bot army that can misuse the platform and do amplification of messages externally. Now, this is not under the control of a Twitter, but this is also another aspect of deception and often initiated by other state players using these big tech platforms. Now, Google wasn't sitting back quietly while Gade had her hands controlling the wheel at Twitter 1.0. Google desires to be an activist organization because they know where every person is and what they are thinking. They want to influence opinions in a bigger way. Google formed an organization to weaponize its collected data to change your opinion. Because my mentioning this will lead specifically to shadow banning of this video, I will not mention the specific names of the alphabet organizations directly but I will refer you to the shadow ban video in the links and you can get the names of the organizations from there. The earliest projects of this Google organization was to influence young Muslims to change what they see on the internet if they were identified to be interested in extremist ideas. Specifically, the project centered on influencing communities in London as a test site. This, by the way, involved this particular organization in London that is now a Google partner. 
and it also involved the intelligence agencies of the U.S. and the U.K. Most of this is publicly stated in this Alphabet subsidiary organization, but some of the other details come from other published sources, including Edward Snowden. When I first heard of this many, many years ago, I had thought back then that this kind of technology, the ability to manipulate what you see on the internet, is scary and could be misused. Today, the London partner of this alphabet organization publicly states their current actions, which are specifically to modify search results of people who use Google search. And the results change based on how you are profiled. For example, certain topics are deamplified or amplified based on their appearance in the search results. But this is just one of the alphabet projects. Other projects include AI-based manipulation of what you see in online comments the ability of the AI to detect concepts in what you say and being able to derive sarcasm, by the way, from a real idea. In other words, some of the technology is used to truly understand what's going on and then have the AI technology intercept what you see and remove it or point you to a different place. Google also has the technology to have bots talk to you and act like real people so you can't even tell if what you see in social media is from a real person and by the way there's a new platform that you can test this against it's called chat gpt it's run by open ai and there you can test the ai in case this is not entirely clear to you what i'm telling you in so many words is that google and facebook as well are building ai that is intended to provide deception you will not see the reality of the opinions on the internet. It will be modified for you so you see what big tech wants you to see. This is a lot more sophisticated than what we are seeing at Twitter, where one person, Gade, acted as an agent of the Democratic Party and tool of the FBI to censor and shadow ban. In the Google scenario, the powers to be set the rules and the AI is then empowered to apply the information dissemination rules on a global basis, all based on whatever views Google wants to push. The arguments against me will always refer back to the fact that these are private companies and there's no law that stops them from doing this. <laughs> Agreed, no argument there. But if you don't know what they are doing, then you have no idea how to respond and you basically accept this deception as being hidden or something out of your control. The reality is that that is part of the deception. The other problem is the monopolistic hold big tech has on information, something that certain political sides thought was a big issue in the past. Big tech is controlled by a few, yet big tech controls most of the channels of communication. The mobile phone OS is a duopoly, only Apple and Google have control over the gateway of the internet for the majority of internet use. They can de-amplify, censor, and hide any opposition view. They have the mechanisms to control things that would basically block certain content from showing up. They can limit apps through the two app stores. They can control views at the search level with Google Search, at the DNS level with private DNS and iCloud private relay, at the URL level with Google safety net, and at the browser level with Chrome and Safari. This control is practically total. And the sad news is that their actions are geometrically worse than what Twitter could have possibly done. Just the control of the discussions related to the pandemic are incredibly robust. I've had videos de-amplified and demonetized on YouTube just from even discussing privacy-related issues on the pandemic. Obviously, I'm keenly aware that opinions raised here on YouTube about being pro or anti <laughs> will cause the AI to flag the video and trigger various actions. But I was talking about privacy issues, such as having my ID checked just to go into a restaurant. Debate on these topics is not allowed. All you have to do is look at the creators who've been banished from YouTube and have made a presence at Odyssey. Folks, the control of the flow of information by big tech on the internet 
is practically total. They can even prevent people from making a living since similarly thinking financial companies will connive to limit thoughts through financial control. It's as if we have no ability to decide for ourselves if an idea is sound or not. I'm not dumb. I consider myself a more moderate thinker. I do think I can identify extremist ideas and exclude that clutter from both political sides. But I do not like to be manipulated. I'd like to be given all the facts and then I can decide for myself based on all the given facts. It is unacceptable to be given information based on deception. How would you like this kind of deception to occur in a court of law? Justifying this through the eyes of politics is just promoting authoritarianism. I've already experienced that in my life. I do not want it back. I do not want it for my children. Friends, I offer solutions to take away the power of big tech. The Brax2 privacy phone is completely big tech free, open source, no tracking by anyone, and definitely no censorship. Yet it is completely functional for most things we need to do on the phone. Instead of having big tech control your internet traffic, we have a VPN solution, Bytes VPN, DNS free from tracking, and a Tor option. We also have Brax Mail. Why have Google actively read your mail? There is a choice. These products support this channel and are available on my uncensored app, Brax.me. The link is in the description. Once again, I thank you for watching. I hope you subscribe and support the fight. See you next time.